Mary Magdalene is one of the most important women of the New Testament. She's still widely revered by many Christians. According to the New Testament, Mary Magdalene traveled with Jesus, she was present at the crucifixion, and she was the first to see him after the resurrection. The Gospel of Mary describes a conversation between her and the disciples. What's interesting is that she occupies the major role in this exchange. She's the one who has the revelation. She's the one who's speaking. She is the one who is being interrogated. Um, and that gives her a prominence that we don't find in any of the other Gospels. It's a fascinating document in a way because it shows that Jesus was having special knowledge that he was imparting to Mary. And therefore, not only you can talk about the, the relationship he had, but it also shows that women may have been seen in the early church as repositories of spiritual knowledge. So you do get the beginnings of the idea that there is possibly a suppression of women's voices, because these documents suggest that women were, were perceived to have special roles within the church, which have now disappeared. The people associated with the Nag Hammadi texts were the Gnostics, an elite group of Christians who believed in salvation by knowledge. We often use the word Gnostic, which means Gnosis is knowledge. In this context, it means secret knowledge, knowledge imparted to a few. And this is the Gnostic texts. One of their main themes runs all the way through. We are privileged to special ideas but we live in an evil world and we are the ones who have the possibility of escape from that because we have the special knowledge. Jesus said, know what is in front of your face and what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you, for there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Gnosticism is all to do with secret knowledge. It was part of a philosophical intellectual movement around the ancient Near East. And many, many, many fathers in Egypt were Christians in their heart, but also Gnostic in their mind. And this is the conflict between Orthodox Christianity versus the intellectual free thinkers. But as the church consolidated its power in the Roman Empire, the Gnostics were increasingly under pressure. Their intellectual take on Christianity didn't tally with the official church doctrine. By the fifth century, there was a fixed version of the Bible. Gnosticism had lost out to a dominant orthodoxy, and it was the orthodox who would shape the future of Christianity. So one of the reasons for the success of what became orthodox Christianity was its ability to, you might say, mass market, a message that could be understood, that was meaningful, they weren't mystical, they weren't so esoteric, they were digestible. In a survival of the fittest sort of thing, the emergent Orthodox Christianity won because they were simply more effective at the game than any other version of Christianity. <laughs>